a very, very good morning to everybody, and I hope everybody enjoyed their holiday. It is December 27th, Tuesday, Tuesday morning. It's 5 o'clock right now, and our futures are up 28 points as of right now, and I'll get to the charts in a minute. We have satisfied the very first obstacle on the SPX and SPY, and that is surpassing the big bear market minus 20% line. And like I've been saying for years and years, if you play this video game long enough, you will realize passing major problem areas typically happens by gapping up over them. Now, before we get to the charts, I do want to point out that last week we closed at 38.44. We opened the week at 38.54. We were down nine points for the week. That is our third consecutive red weekly candle. I've gone over this time and time again when it was appropriate to discuss. Three red weekly candles is your limit. You will rarely ever see four red weekly candles. Rarely. Earlier this year, we did get more than four. We got seven in a row when we had that drop off from March. Everybody wants to go out there and be a bear, and I apologize, but it is not the time to be bearish. We did get a dip earlier. Um, not earlier. We did get a dip when we broke down below that 39.13 last week, that 39.20 level. Completely screwed up my plan for a Santa rally continuation, like I showed in the video going back to all the other Santa rallies, expecting that our low of the week came in here during this OPEX week. It didn't. We got a little bit more of a dip. It happens. That's why the exposure is more out into March, more out into June, to let all of this noise in Michigosh go get through it, and we start heading forward. We closed at 38.45. We have three red weekly candles. So right off the top of the bat, the easiest trade I'm going to post out there in the email, I'll post it out in the, in the spreads room, is going to be selling the 3845 puts and buying the 3840 puts for this week on Friday, ride through them for the entire week. I will bet right now the credit is somewhere in the range of around a dollar. We'll see what it looks like. So quickly, very quickly over to the charts. Here's our spy for the last five days. As you see, we gapped up above this bear market line 384. We're still risking a push that we will need to get above that 380 last week. After we get through 88 from last week, just again, zooming out a little bit as to the work that we need to get done. 388 from last week, then we start fighting this 390. 390, we start fighting 395. 395, then we start really squeezing everybody for 404, 403, 405. I don't think. 414 until early week of first week week of january again here's our trend line our falling trend line coming off of the highs so again this 405 407 area is going to be a little bit of an area of concern but again all of our charts as we were going into last week are ready for this and ready for a move to the upside here's our qqq we're over here on our june lows at 269 june the qqq's got all of the work not a little bit of the work. All of the work has to be done over on the QQQs. And again, 275, first break line, it needs to get taken care of. After we get through this 275, then we got a lot of work to get to 279. 279, we got a lot of work to get to 286, 285. So 286, 285 would be my top end for this maximum best case scenario. First problem you're going to have to fight is this 275 area, and we'll see how that goes. Come over here onto the VIX and got a nice little gap up on the VIX so the VIX can get dropped and get and fill that gap down there below 2102. Nothing really to be concerned about until we start getting the VIX down there in the 20s. And again, the VIX is 30 days out. So for the moment right now, it's not an enormous amount of bearishness in the short term because we do have these zero day trades. Yeah, zero days to expiration with the SPX, with the SPY. Q, and a majority of retail money is all going into that. The VIX is not as reliable 
as it once was because we now have all of these new options. But then, yeah, going over here to the dollar, dollar got a gap down over here and pushing down onto the five day lows. If we can get a move down there below that 104, then we are obviously going to be looking for the dollar to retest this 10340 from a much wider point of view, which I don't really want to get into right now. You're extremely bearish over here on the dollar. Zoom out even a little bit further. You can see here extremely bearish over here on the dollar, which is very, very good for stocks. We will see how we get to all of that, because as of right now, the only ones that are really lagging are the SPX and the QQQ. The IWM is just a support index. You have the Nifty in India, all-time highs. Denmark, all-time highs. FTSE has been threatening all-time highs all year long. And here we are with the SPX and the QQQ down here at the 20% and 35% levels from their all-time highs. So, again... You don't have markets around the world pushing all-time highs when you are going to go into a stock market crash. That's just not the way that it happens. When everybody becomes bullish is when that takes place, just like you experienced last year this time. Have a fantastic Tuesday. I will see you in the chat room, and I will give you that spread that I was talking about for the end of the week to look for a green weekly candle.